Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve a trigonometric equation with multiple angles. So what you can see here is we have a trigonometric, you know, sine, cosine, and tangent here. Um, but now we have something a little bit different. Instead of taking like the sine of an angle or cosine of an angle or tangent, you can see now we have multiple angles, 2x, 3x, 3x, 2x. So how is that going to affect our solutions? Well, it is going to affect our solutions, and it's, very, and it's very, something very important. The other thing I did not mention, I did not write in here, we are now going to choose solutions that are between 0 and 2 pi. So previously, we always found the solutions, you know, in previous videos, I showed you how to find all of the solutions by adding you know, our multiplier, you know, plus 2 pi n or um, pi n. Well, now we're just going to find only the solutions that are contained between 0 and 2 pi. All right. So the first thing, the main important thing really to understand about the 2x is we're not going to do anything to the 2x until the very end. So we're going to treat this problem just like we've treated the rest of the problems. Um, we're still going to find, pretend to find all the solutions and so forth. And then we're going to start implying the 2x and you dealing with the constraints. So um, remember, when we were solving for this, you know, I, I took this as we could solve by taking the inverse sine of both sides. So basically, what we're trying to find is 2x is equal to the inverse sine of square root of 3 over 2. So we need to figure out what is the inverse sine of square root of 3 over 2. What is the angle when the sine of that angle is equal to the square root of 3 over 2? So to do that, we have to go to our unit circle and say, all right, so what angles then do we have when the, when the sine is equal to square root of 3 over 2? Well, our two angles are going to be pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. And just a little reminder, let's go through these points. This point is 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. This point is negative 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. So you can see at both of these angles, the y coordinate is going to be square root of 3 over 2. So that means the angle that fits, that solves this, is going to be pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. However, that ain't, we're not solving for x. We're now solving for 2x. Ooh, I just bit my tongue. So how is that going to affect our answer? Well, in two different ways it's going to affect our answer. The first thing we want to do is write our solutions just like we are writing it for all the solutions. So you can see here, I'm going to have to add coterminal angles, right? So I would have x equals pi over 3 as one solution plus 2 pi n. And then I have x is equal to um, 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. However, remember, we're not solving for x, or we are solving for x, but in our problem, we don't have x. We have 2x. Okay? So therefore, to solve for x, we need to undo multiplying by 2, which is going to be divide by 2. So we divide by 2 on the left and the right side. Now remember, dividing a binomial by 2, you're going to divide both of these um, by 2. So therefore, when doing that, what I obtain is I have pi over 3 divided by 2. Um, and 2 pi n divided by 2. Now, I'm kinda, I don't want to spend too much time going over the fractions here. Uh, so x is going to equal pi over 6 plus the 2's divide out left with pi n. Over here, I have x equals, here is going to be um, the 2's divide out, so I'm left with pi over 3 plus pi n. Okay? We do a lot of this, and I know it still gets a lot of students you know, kind of tripped up, but it's really important to make sure you know how to divide and multiply fractions here when you get to it. So here's our two solutions. So we have, now I have a new angle. Now I have two new angles. Not only are we including pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3, that was our original, but that was for x. Now for 2x, we have pi over 6, which is going to be this angle right here, plus pi. So if I add pi over here, that's going to take me over here. So I can say that's going to be pi over 6. All the way around here is going to be 7 pi over 6. Now, if I add in another pi, that would be over 2 pi. And that's where this constraint comes in. It can only be ant solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So when I divided by 2, I got pi over 6, which is my first angle. Then I added pi, because it's plus pi n. So I add pi. That gives me 7 pi over 6. I can't add pi again, because it would go over 2 pi. Then you can see here, I actually have pi over 3, which was originally a solution here. Then it says plus pi. So now I'm going to add pi to that. And when I add pi to that, that gives me the angle 4 pi over 3. So now my solutions are going to be x equals pi over 6, pi over 3, 7 pi over 6, and 4 pi 
over 3. So I have four solutions in between 0 and 2 pi. I'm not just going to be listing all of my solutions like I previously did. All right, so now let's go and get into cosine. And again, it's going to be the exact, basically going to be doing the exact same thing. We're going to take the inverse cosine of both sides. Um, so therefore, we'll have 2x is equal to the inverse cosine of square root of 2 over 2. So we need to figure out when is cosine, when is that cosine equal to, what, for what angles is cosine equal to the square root of 2 over 2? So again, we create our unit circle. Okay, now we know cosine of 2 over 2. Hopefully, you know that that's going to be at these two points here, which this first angle, which is pi over 4. The reason why cosine um, that works is because you can see the x value is square root of 2 over 2. And then we also have pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. OK, so we have our two angles. You can see if we were going to write these as all of the solutions, again, I'd have to add 2 pi like I did before. So I'll do these, um, I'll do these side by side here this time. So I'll do x, is, or x, but it's not x though, it's 2x. 2x is equal to pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. And 2x is equal to pi over 4, oops, not pi over 4, 7 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. Then again, just like we did in the last one, I got to solve for x. So I'm going to divide by 2. Remember, the 2 divides into both of those. So therefore, I'm left with now x equals pi over 4 divided by 2 is pi over 8 plus pi n. Here, divide by 2. x equals 7 pi divided by 4 is now 7 pi over 8 plus pi n. So now these are going to be our solutions. So let's go ahead and graph them. So we have, so in this case, what I have as my solution is pi over 8, which is going to be something like this. So I have pi over 8, then plus pi n. So if you add pi to that, you're going to get 7 pi over 8. I'm sorry. You have uh, 9 pi over 8. And unfortunately, I cannot add another pi to that. right? If I add another pi to that, that would take me to 17 pi over 8. So that's not going to work. So um, then we go over to this one, and we have 7 pi over 8. Well, 7 pi over 8 is going to be right here. And then if I add pi to that, add pi to that, that is going to take me to 15 pi over 8. So again, you can see that I have four solutions. So therefore, my solutions for this problem is going to be x equals pi over 8, plus, um, pi over 8, comma, 7 pi over 8, comma, 9 pi over 8, and 15 pi over 8. So there's four solutions between 0 and 2 pi. All right, so now let's go and try to get some tangents in here. Um, so now when looking at tangent here, I have square root of 3 divided by 3. Again, just like what we did before, well, let's evaluate when is tangent equal to square root of 3 over 3. So again, we go to our unit circle here. Okay, And square root of 3 over 3, remember there's basically two points. We, we, have, we have four angles. You have pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. And they each have square root of 2 times square root of 3 over 2. And hopefully you have the unit circle by you, or hopefully you just remember <laughs> um, what each of these points are. So remember, tangent is y over x. So when I do y over x, which one is going to give me square root of 3 uh, divided by 2? All right, um, y over x. So hopefully you guys can see that my solution for that one is going to be pi over 6. That's going to be the angle that when you, when you divide 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2, that's going to reduce to square root of 3 over 3. All right. But remember, tangent is positive not only in the first quadrant, but also in the second quadrant. So if I was to reflect, or not second quadrant, but third quadrant. So therefore, if I was to reflect that, that means that would have to be negative, and that would be negative, which would be um, pi over 6. That would be 7 pi over 6. OK. Now, for this one, remember for tangent, you can see that rather than adding 2 pi like I had to do for sines and cosines, here, pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6, that's halfway around the circle. So if I had pi over 6 
and I just added pi, that takes me to my solution, 7 pi over 6. If I add pi again, that's going to take me to the next one. So um, rather than, remember, we first always graph, do it like we're solving all the solutions. Um, so if I was going to write the, my answer in all the solutions, I would write 3x, right? Because it is 3x, it's not x. 3x is equal to pi over 6 plus pi n. Okay? So now, again, just like we did before, that represents all the solutions. Now we've got to solve for x. So I'm going to divide by 3, divide by 3. Therefore, I have x is equal to um, pi divided by 3 is going to be um, pi over 18 plus pi over 3. Now, um, pi over 3n. Now, the best thing to do would, instead of writing this as pi over um, 3, the best thing I would say to do is rewrite that in terms of um, in 18 as the denominator. So really, what you can see is that 6 over 18. So it's really x equals pi over 18 plus, if you multiply by 6 on top and bottom, you get 6 pi over 18 n. OK? So our first solution is 6 pi over 18. Now, rather than using my unit circle, um, this one might be a little different with pi over 16. So what I'm going to do is remember, all my values have to be contained between 0 and 2 pi. So what is, if my first angle is pi over 18, what is going to be basically 2 pi? Well, that's going to be x equals 36 pi over 18. That's equivalent to 2 pi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep on adding, I'm going to keep on adding angles of 6 pi over 18 until I get up to 36. So I first start with x equals, my first solution is pi over 18. My next solution is going to be pi over 18 plus um, 6 pi over 18. So that's going to be 7 pi over 18. Then I'll add 6 pi over 18 again, which is going to give me 13 pi over 18. Then I'll add that again, which is going to give me 19 pi over 18. I can add that again. So that's going to give me 25 pi over 18. Add that again, which will give me 31 pi over 18. And if I was to add it again, that would give me 37 pi over 18. But what you notice is 37 pi over 18 is larger than 36 pi over 18. And 36 pi over 18 is equivalent to 2 pi. And my solutions has to be between 0 and 2 pi. So therefore, that is not going to be a solution. And we're going to end with the solution set of pi over 18 all the way up to 31 pi over 18. All right, so now let's get into the last one. Um, again, in this case, now you can see that tangent, when is tangent of 3x equal to 0? So again, we go back to our unit circle and say, all right, well, when is tangent equal to 0? Well, tangent, remember, uh, we have a couple points here. We have 0, 0, I'm sorry, 1 comma 0, and we have 0 comma negative 1 comma 0. We also have 0 comma 1 and um, 0 comma negative 1. Now, remember, tangent is y over x. So if I did y over x, these are undefined. Pi halves and 3 pi halves are undefined for tangent. So therefore, if I was going to take the inverse tangent on both sides, I would have 3x equals inverse tangent of 0. Inverse tangent of 0 is equal to 0 and pi. So I could write that, though. My solution I would write as 3x is equal to pi n. The reason why pi n works here in this case is because, again, if n was 0, then you'd have 0 times pi, which is 0, which would give you the first solution. If n is 1, 1 times pi is pi, which is over there. But again, that's for solving for x. We're not solving for x. We're solving for 3x. So therefore, now um, I am going to uh, divide by 3, divide by 3. And therefore, I have x is equal to pi over 3, or pi n, divided by 3. So therefore, we're just going to include all the solution sets for, and we're just going to keep on adding. We're just going to basically, oh, what am I doing? Pi, yeah, pi n. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to keep on rewriting n as 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up until we get to 2 pi. So if n is 0, then we'd have 0. If n is 1, we'd have pi over 3. If n was 2, we'd have 2 pi over 3. If n was 3, we'd have, well, let's write this over here, kind of run out of space. So x equals um, 0, pi over 3, 2 pi over 3. If n was 3, we'd have 3 pi over 3, which is pi. If n is 4, you'd have 4 pi over 3. If n was 5, you'd have 5 pi over 3. And if n was 6, you'd have 6 pi over 3, which would be 2 pi, which is, um, uh, which is the same thing as 0, right? So it's, it's a multiple, multiple angle that's not uh, contained. So 0 and 2 pi are the same. And we can't go any higher. We can't go to 7 pi because then that would be past um, 2 pi. So therefore, that is going to be your solution set. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve your multi-angle or solve your trigonometric equations with multi-angles. Thanks.